But wait, there is more. Whilst 25 is indeed the correct answer to today's puzzle, so very well done if you got that, there are in fact an infinite number of correct solutions to the problem. And here I'm going to talk you through the steps to get all of the possible numbers which satisfy these four rules. Our approach is going to be very similar to what we've just done, but now we're going to think of things using more equations and using more algebra. So to start with, let's call x the unknown class size. Now x, this number, must satisfy rules one to four. So our starting point is going to be to write these rules in terms of equations. Now our first rule says that x must be an odd number. Even numbers are defined to be any number that is perfectly divisible by two. And so an odd number is one more than a multiple of two, exactly as we saw in our problem. So what that means is that x must be equal to a multiple of two plus one. So here, this tells us that we have to have 2k plus 1 for x, where k can be any other positive whole number. We do the same with rule number 2. We need something that is one more than a multiple of 3. So that means we must have 3 times an unknown number l plus 1. So very similar to odd numbers in case number one, rule number one. But here we need a multiple of three, so it's three times L, where L again is any positive whole number, and then we add one. And I've used L here because this number L can and probably will be different to the number K in the first part. Continuing in the same way for rule number three, we need one more than a multiple of four. So you may have figured out the pattern now. That means that x must be able to be written down as four times something, let's call it m, plus one. Rule number four, very similar, except this time there is no remainder. So x is a multiple of five, which means that x is, can be written as five times something. So here it's five times n, where n is going to be another positive whole number. Next, we start combining some of these rules. So what I'm going to do is take the first three, because they have this common number of one in their equations, and I'm going to combine them all to get another equation. So we know from rule number one that x minus one is equal to a multiple of two. So is equal to two k for some number k. Now we can do the same for rule number two and say that x minus one is also equal to three times l. Rule number three says that x minus one is equal to four times m. And then we're going to leave rule number four for now because it doesn't contain this one and I'm trying to concentrate on x minus one and solving for that. What this set of equations is actually telling us is that x minus one, which is still a whole number, is divisible exactly by two with zero remainder, divisible exactly by three with zero remainder, and divisible by four with zero remainder. So if you think about this for a moment, what does it mean for a number to be divisible by several other numbers exactly. So if our number is going to be even and divisible by two, and it's going to be divisible by three, then the number must be divisible by two times three, because two must be a factor, and three must also be a factor. And so two times three gives you six. So these two combined tell you that our number must be divisible by Six. If we now bring in rule number three, the fact that x minus one is also divisible by four, then perhaps you might be thinking we must have two times three is six, times four is 24, so our total number x minus one must be divisible by 24. It has to be a multiple of 24. Now, 
you have to be a little bit careful here because whilst two and three are numbers which do not have any common factors, they are both prime numbers, so one cannot divide the other. When we bring in number four, four is actually equal to two times two. So the fact that your number is already divisible by two means you have some extra information in terms of it being divisible by four. So overall, combining all three, what you actually want to do is find the lowest number, which is divisible by two, three, and four. So 24 will work. 24 divided by four is six, divided by three is eight, divided by two is 12. So 24 will indeed work, but we want the lowest number, which is divisible by two, three, and four. And again, if you think about this a little bit, you'll probably get 12. So 12 is in fact the lowest common multiple of two, three, and four. So it is not quite equal to two times three times four. It's equal to two times three. We already have a two. So if we write four as two times two, we've already got one of those twos. So we only need a further one more two to get six times two is 12. So it's all to do with factoring numbers as primes and this thing called the lowest common multiple. Thinking about things algebraically, we want to again write down an equation which represents the fact that x minus 1 is divisible by 12. So similar to what we had over here and what we've done here, we must have that x minus 1 is equal to a multiple of 12. So here y is again any positive whole number and this equation must now be satisfied. So the final step is to now think about how this rule representing rules one, two, three combines with rule number four. So we have that x minus one is 12 times y and we know that x must be equal to five times n for some unknown number n. So if we rearrange this, we get that x is 12y plus 1, and then we need to have this equal to a multiple of 5, so this has to be equal to 5n. To solve this equation, we're going to just check the first few values of y and see if we can spot a pattern. So for y equals 0, we get that x is equal to 1, this needs to be a multiple of five, which we can very clearly and obviously see will not work. One cannot be written as five times a whole number. So we cannot have y equal to zero. Now if y equals one, we get 12 plus one is 13. Again, it is not a multiple of five, so that also will not work. Now when y equals two, we get that x is equal to 12 times 2, 24, plus 1 is 25. So that will work. That is a multiple of 5. So when y is 2, we can find an n, n equals 5, such that this equation is satisfied. And this, of course, you'll notice is the smallest answer and the answer that we found previously when we just considered the four rules without doing all of this fancy algebra and using these equations. But of course, we decided to use this method to find all possible solutions. So whilst it's nice that we got back the same solution from before, we want to keep going. So if we now check the other possible values of y, we can hopefully find something else that is a multiple of five. So when y is equal to three, we get 12 times three, 36 plus one, 37, that won't work. When y is equal to four, we get 48 plus one, 49. Really close, but not quite a multiple of five. y equals five is going to give us 61. y equals six will give us 73. y equals seven will give us seven times 12 is 84, plus one is 85. So we have another solution. So when y is equal to seven, we get that x is 85. And this is, of course, five 
multiplied by 17. So we now have a second solution. The class which contains Ada could in fact be of size 85 and it would still satisfy all of these rules and would be a correct solution to today's maths puzzle. If you continue to try larger and larger values of y, we can do exactly as we just did. You can check those values and see which ones give you a multiple of five and therefore a valid solution. This is a perfectly reasonable way to continue and generate an infinite number of solutions. Now we can be a little bit smarter and think about what is happening here, what is the pattern. Now we found the original solution of 25 occurred when y was equal to 2. And then our next possible solution happened when y was 7. So there's been an increase in the value of y by 5. Now going back to this equation, which I'm going to highlight in this orange box, we see that our class size is equal to 12 times y plus 1. Now when we increase y by 5 up to y equals 7, we are increasing x by 12 times 5. So our x, our class size, increases by 60. So increasing y by 5 increases x by 60. And this gives us another valid solution because we have a valid solution number 1, x is 25. We then add on 60, which is a multiple of 5, to get 85, and that gives us our next solution. So if we were to do the same thing again and add on 5 to our value of y, we would get that y is equal to 12. And plugging these numbers in, which is one way to calculate this, you get 12 times 12 is 144, plus 1 is 145, is a valid solution, which is exactly 60 more than the last one we had. And that's because we've increased y by 5, so x increases by 12 times 5, which is 60. So every time you increase y by 5, you increase x by 60 and get another valid solution. And all of the ones in between, so y equals 8, 9, 10, 11, they will all fail. And you can check this yourself because what we're doing is we're adding on an amount to our previous solution that is not a multiple of 5. So overall, the final formula to give us all possible solutions to the class size problem is equal to 25 plus 60 times z, where z here is a non-negative whole number. So z equals naught gives our original solution and the correct solution to today's puzzle, which is Ada's class size is equal to 25. But as we've just seen, we can continue to add multiples of 60 and generate an infinite possible set of solutions. And each one of those solutions comes from this formula where you allow z to increase from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, on and on forever and ever. Thank you very much for watching. Please do enjoy the rest of Maths Week and remember to subscribe to my channel for more maths fun.